After studying this module, we shall be able to learn the nature and purpose of management, understand that management applies to all kinds of organizations and to managers at all organizational levels and know the evolution of management and the various schools of management thought. One of the most important human activities is managing. Ever since people began forming groups to accomplish aims that they could not achieve as individuals, managing has been essentially to ensure the coordination of individual efforts. Management consists of getting things done through others by directing their efforts in an integrated and coordinated manner in order to attain the business objectives. It is a process consists of five functions, namely planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling business operations in such a manner as to attain the predetermined goal. It also involves securing men, money, materials, machinery and methods needed for the achievement of business objectives. These all are needed to put into operations. It is necessary to check their performance in order to use productive use of all the resources. Management consists of organizational objectives that involve goal formation, goal accomplishment, performance appraisal, development of an operating philosophy, and ensuring the organization's survival. Management is a process of designing and maintaining the environment in which individuals working together and in groups effectively accomplish the selective aims. This basic definition needs to be amplified. Thus, managers carry out a managerial functions of planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Management applies to all kinds of organizations, public or private. It applies to the different functional areas that is finance, marketing, human resource, and operations. It applies to managers at all operational levels, namely lower, middle, and higher levels of management. The aim of all managers is the same, that is, to create value. Managing is concerned with productivity, which implies both effectiveness and efficiency. Management is a set of activities, planning and decision making, organizing, leading and controlling, directed at an organization's resources, human, financial, physical and information, with the aim of achieving organizational goals in an efficient and effective manner. Management is the process of designing and maintaining an environment in which individuals working together in groups efficiently accomplish selected aims. Here are some managers you may know. Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, Timothy D. Cook at Apple Computers, Barack Obama, the President of the United States. All do manage organizations. Let us now move on to define an organization. It is a group of people working together to create a surplus. There are a variety of legal types of organizations, including corporations, governments, non-governmental organizations, international organizations, armed forces, charities, not-for-profit corporations, partnerships, cooperatives, and universities. Controlling a complex organization so as to achieve desired goals resulted in the evolution of the concept of management.
The process of dividing authority and responsibility among the various executives is called the creation of levels of management. There is no fixed number of management levels prescribed for a particular organization, but for the convenience of study, the levels of management may be classified into three groups, top management, middle management, and lower level or supervisory management. Every manager at every level of hierarchy of an organization has to carry out management functions irrespective of the nature and size of the organization. These are planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Let us now move on to study the evolution of management thought. For this, we first need to understand what we mean by school of management thoughts. These are the theoretical frameworks for the study of management. Each of the schools of management thought are based on somewhat different assumptions about human beings, the way they work, and the organizations for which they work. The evolution of management thought can be studied under the following headings. Pre-scientific management period, early management approaches represented by scientific management, process management theory, and human relations movement. Modern management approaches represented by behavioral science movement, systems approach, contingency approach, etc. The real development of management thought began with scientific management. The approach was stated by Taylor, though some have a concept of management prior to the thinker of Taylor. Earlier management thoughts came from the Roman Catholic Church, from the military organizations and a group of German and Austrian public administrators and intellectuals in the 16th century. The concept of management was mostly related to principles of specialization, selection of subordinates, and training, and simplification of administrative procedures. In the later period, the contributions made by Charles Babbage, James Watt, Robinson Burton, Robert Owen, Dunn, and Simon. Charles Babbage was a professor of mathematics at the Cambridge University and suggested the use of accurate data obtained through rigid investigation for the management of an undertaking. James Watt and Robert and Robinson Burton used management techniques such as market research, forecasting, production planning, and planned machinery layout, standardization of components and parts, elaborate statistical records, maintenance of control reports, cost accounting data and provisioning for the welfare of personnel. Robert Owen managed a group of textile mills in Scotland and he is well known as the promoter of cooperative and trade unions operations in, the, in England. Henry S. Simon, the most effective thinkers who advocated that economic and social systems, the role of capital is constructive, creative, and entrepreneurial, other than that of exploiting the resources for their own benefits. The contributions of management thinkers stated was limited mostly to the field of developing concepts to make resources more effective at the shop floor level. These contributions were made bit by bit and in a haphazard manner and have failed to stimulate management as a distinct discipline for further studies. However, the various ideas stated by them have created an awareness about managerial problems. 
the stage had been set by the end of the 19th century for making a systematic study and that was the beginning made by Frederick Taylor who is known as the father of scientific management. Let us begin by understanding the contributions of the early approaches to management that were evolved in the pre-scientific management period. Robert Owen, British industrialist, was one of the first managers to recognize the importance of human resources and the welfare of workers. He proposed legislative reforms to improve the working conditions of labor. Charles Babbage, an English mathematician, focused on creating efficiencies of production through the division of labor and the application of mathematics to management problems. Other contributors were James Watt and Robinson Boulton, Town and Simon. The contributions of management thinkers stated above were limited mostly to the field of developing the concept to make resources more effective at the shop floor levels. The pre-scientific period was followed by the early management approaches, also known as the classical approaches. These form the foundation for the field of management. The schools for management thought are scientific management, administrative theory, and bureaucratic management. Taylor, Gilbreth, Gantt, and others made tremendous contributions to the concept of scientific management. All of these persons, Taylor's contribution is the most significant because this he is considered as the father of scientific management. We shall give here the contributions of Taylor and some of the others. Taylor worked as a chief engineer in steel works where he joined as a worker. After he worked at the Bethlehem Steel Works and after retirement from his concern, he worked as a consultant. Taylor, that is the founder of scientific management movement, states that the objective of management to be secure the maximum prosperity for each employer, coupled with the maximum prosperity for each employee. According to Taylor, scientific management is its essence and consists of philosophy which results in the combination of four great principles of management, namely the development of true science, the scientific selection of workers, their scientific selection and development, intimate and friendly cooperation between the management and their workmen. When the management of a business unit is based on these systematic study and analysis, the various aspects of work involved with a view to find out the best way of doing things. We call it scientific management of business. Broadly speaking, scientific management is an art of knowing what is to be done in the best way of doing it. Taylor observed that inefficiency prevails in the organization because of three causes. Namely, workers feel that an increase in output would lead to their unemployment. Secondly, defective systems of management and because of these, each worker restricts his output in order to safeguard his interests. And efficient rule of the thumb, efforts and wasting methods of work. The elements of scientific management are determination of the task, planning of industrial operations, proper training and selection of workers, improvement in the methods of work, modification of organizations, and mental revolution. The determination of the ta task or workload of an employee was based on a method of study, routing, motion studies, time study, fatigue study, and different piece wage systems. After setting to work, the next step was to plan the production. 
which required the planning of industrial operations. This involves further considerations, namely what work shall be done, how the work shall be done, where the work shall be done and when the work shall be done. Proper selection and training of the workers and also their correct placement have to be done by the management. Further, in order to make the work complete and the task as per the conditions set by the management, there was a need in the improvement of methods of work. This involves standardization of tools and equipment, speed, condition of work and materials. Taylor also suggested modification in the organization. This involves introduction of functional foremanship. According to this, the two functions of planning were divided. He has also suggested eight functional foremen. A route clerk, instruction card clerk, time and cost clerk, gang boss, speed boss, repair boss, inspector and finally shop disciplinarian. For the success of scientific management, there should be a change in the mental outlook of both the employee and the employer. The mutual hostility and suspicions should give way to a place of cooperation and goodwill. Scientific management is defined as that kind of management which conducts a business or affairs by standards established by facts or truths gained through the systematic observation, experiment or reasoning. Major contributors in this field were Frederick Winslow Taylor, Frank and Lillian Gilbreth, Henry L. Gant. Frederick Winslow Taylor is considered as the father of scientific management. He believed in the science of work, the underlying laws or principles that govern various work activities. He further believed in the economically motivated mutuality of interest of employees and managers. He emphasized the following principles as the guidelines for effective management. Develop the science of work, one's best way. Emphasize an absolute adherence to work standards. Apply a financial incentive system. Utilize specialized functional supervision. Scientifically select place and train workers, develop and maintain friendly labor management relations. Frank and Gilbreth are known for their time and motion studies. Motion study involves finding out the best sequence and minimum number of motions needed to complete a task. It is about exploring new ways for eliminating unnecessary motions and reducing work fatigue. Henry L. Gant developed the Gant chart to summarize work activities and identify those tasks that should be performed simultaneously or sequentially. He advocated a minimum wage-based incentive system and bonuses for work above and beyond the expected standard by employees. He proposed a bonus system for supervisors to encourage them to manage subordinates effectively. Let us now proceed to the administrative theory. Henry Fayol is known as the father of management. He laid down 14 principles of management which are division of work, authority and responsibility, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, subordination of the individual interest to the general interest, remuneration, centralization, scalar chain, order, equity, stability, initiative, 
esprit de corps, that is, team spirit. According to Fayol, a French engineer, he initiated the administrative process of management in Europe. Sheldon, Mooney and Raleigh and Jovic and Gallic also contributed to the administrative theory of management. This theory is called the functional management. It advocates the theory of belonging to the process of management. Fayol published a book called The General and Industrial Management in French, which was later brought into an English edition. Fayol identified management as a separate skill or functions performed by a supervisor in the organization. He clearly distinguished the difference between technical and managerial skills and emphasized that the supervisor should be efficient in both. He stated that the technical ability is more dominant in the lower levels of management, whereas the managerial ability is more important in the higher levels of management. Fayol, in his famous book, stated 14 principles of management that can capture the entire flavor of the process of management theory. Slide 26. The behavioral approach applies to the knowledge of behavioral sciences, physiology, psychology, anthropology, to managing people. A behavioral scientist have made significant contribution to our understanding of individual motivation, group behavior, interpersonal relationships at work, and the importance of work to a human being. They have literally laid the foundation to the emergence of an existing discipline, human resource management which emphasizes the effective utilization of human resource in organization. The behavioral science movement, which started after 1940, emphasized for the importance of individuals and their interpersonal relationships. Psychology of the individual as related to personal need and motivations and the motivational potential in people. The important contributors to behavioral science movements were Maslow, Hedgesberg, Broom, and McGregor. While Maslow developed the need hierarchy to explain human behavior with an organization, Hertzberg and Broom developed the motivational models, which explained the causes of human behavior and motivation in business. Behavioral sciences movement has drawn heavily on the work of Maslow to explain the human behavior and the dynamics of the motivational process. McGregor developed two theories, namely the theory of X and Y and explained certain basic assumptions of the human element. In his theory, the theory X, the management assumes that most people dislike work. Most people must be coerced and threatened before they work. Most people prefer to be directed. They avoid responsibility and have very little ambition. In theory, why management assumes that work is a natural activity, like play. People are capable of self-direction and self-control. People have committed to the organizational objectives. If they are rewarded in doing so, the classical theory reflected all aspects of theory X, while the behavioral theory of the management reflects most of the actions, acts of theory Y. Theory of bureaucratic management. Max Weber made a distinction between authority and power. Weber believed that power induces obedience through force or the threat of force which induces individuals to adhere to regulations. The characteristics of Weber's ideal bureaucracy are 
work specification and division of labor, abstract rules and regulations, impersonality of managers, and hierarchy of organization structure. The behavioral approach to management emphasized individual attitudes and behavior and group processes and recognized the significance of behavioral process in the workplace. Elton Mayo's experiments showed an increase in worker productivity that was produced by the psychological stimulus of being singled out, involved, and made to feel important. Thorn experiments can be summarized as the group is the key factor in job performance. Perceived meaning and importance of the work is the factor determining output and workplace culture sets its own production standards. Let us now discuss the various modern management approaches. We shall study the behavioral science movement, system theory and contingency theory. Behavioral science movement can be studied under two main theories, Maslow's need hierarchy theory and Mick Gregor's theory X and theory Y. Abraham Maslow identified sets of human basic needs and suggested that they could be arranged in a hierarchy based on their importance to the individual. The individuals have physiological needs, safety needs, social needs, esteem needs, and finally, self-actualization needs. This hierarchy suggests that people are motivated to fulfill basic needs before moving on to other, more advanced needs. As people progress up the pyramid, needs become increasingly psychological and social. Maslow emphasized the importance of self-actualization, which is a process of growing and developing as a person in order to achieve individual potential. Theory X and Theory Y are theories of human motivation created and developed by Douglas McGregor in the 1960s. They describe two contrasting models of workforce motivation. In Theory X, management assumes that most people dislike work. Most people must be coerced and threatened before they work. Most people prefer to be directed they avoid responsibility and have little ambition. In theory why, management assumes that work is a natural activity like play. People are capable of self-direction and self-control and people become committed to organizational objectives if they are rewarded in doing so. The systems theory views an organization as made up of a number of interrelated elements, each functioning as a system to contribute to the purpose of the whole organization, which exists in an interdependent relationship with the external environment. The diagram provides an insight into the understanding of the theory. theory is based on the premise that situations dictate managerial action. That is, different situations call for different approaches. 
no single way of solving problems exist. Contingency theory is an outgrowth of systems design. J. Galbraith, 1973, states that in contingency theory, there is no one best way to organize. Any way of organizing is not equally effective. The best way to organize depends on the nature of the environment to which the organization relates. The diagram shown summarizes the viewpoints of different approaches to management. System viewpoint deals with the question of how different parts of an organization fit together. For example, individual, group, organization, and environment. Traditional viewpoint emphasizes what managers do, plan, organize, lead, and control. Contingency viewpoint highlights the manager's use of external environment, technology, or individual in different ways to solve different problems. It rests on the premise that there is no one best way to solve every problem. Behavioral viewpoint, on the other hand, recognizes the significance of human behavior in the accomplishment of goals. It deals with the different behavioral roles that a manager plays, interpersonal roles, informational roles, and decision roles. The new emerging concepts in management thought are that of Theory Z and quality management. William Uchi outlined a new theory called Theory Z. It is the blend of positive aspects of both American and Japanese management styles. Quality management is a management approach that directs the efforts of management towards bringing about continuous improvement in product and service quality to achieve higher levels of customer satisfaction and build customer loyalty. In this module, we have learned about different classification of management approaches, a few theorists and theories, early approaches to management, classical approach, behavioral approach, modern approaches to management, emerging approaches in management thought. In this module, we learned about the meaning and importance of management and its various implementations in different fields. The concept of management has become universal and no organization can survive without it. Management is the process of designing and maintaining an environment, efficiently accomplishing the selected aims. Management is an essential activity at all operational levels. Management consists of getting done th things done by directing others and their efforts in a coordinated and efficient manner for attainment of the business objectives. In the process consists of functions such as planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. In the business operations in such a manner so as to attain the predetermined goal. Management as a practice is an art. Organized knowledge about management is a science. Many theories about management have been proposed and each contributes something to our knowledge as to what managers must do. The evolution of management thought can be classified into three distinct stages. Pre-scientific management period, early management approaches represented by scientific management, process management, human relation management and modern management approaches represented by behavioral science movement, systems approach, contingency approach, etc.